glad you're back with me for another video. Today we are going to be talking about a family feud that took place in the book of Genesis and it was really bad. It was a tough one, uh, but we see God's leading and direction and how he responds to that. And today what we want, we want to learn the biblical truth we want to get out of this is that there are consequences of pride um, when we don't do things the right way and jealousy and it's harmful to everyone. You know, those things, pride and jealousy and, and doing things the wrong way, doing the things, doing things that we think are right but doing them in the way we want to and not the way God wants us to. Um, and so our desire should be to please God um, by doing things right, doing things correctly, and loving other Christians and, uh, and other people without jealousy or resentment because of how God's blessing them. And so we're going to be in Genesis chapter 4 today. And you got to remember, this is the very early start of man living on the earth, mankind, humankind. And so... Um, we want to talk about that today, but before we do, we have another worship song that we're going to sing today. So I want you to check this out right now, and I'll see you back here in just a couple of minutes.
All right, well, I really hope you enjoyed that song. Uh, it's, a, it's a great song. Uh, I love listening to this music, and so I hope that, uh, that that's been an encouragement to you. Um, so, I want you to grab your Bibles, and uh, we're going to look at Genesis chapter 4, and we're going to read through this. Now, I will tell you, this is kind of a tough chapter to read through, um, but because of just all the craziness that's going on in this, in this part of the story of creation, and how God begins to deal with, with human beings. And uh, so anyway, let's read, uh, starting in verse 1, we're going to read the whole chapter. It's not a real long chapter today. So it says, now Adam knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. Uh, Cain actually means, uh, that's the definition of what Cain means. It means that uh, I have gotten something. And uh, so in verse 2 it says, and again she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain was a worker of the, of the ground. And so... Abel's a shepherd, and he raises flocks uh, of domesticated animals, um, probably more than sheep, but we don't know for sure. All it says here is that he was a keeper of the sheep. So we know that he was a, he, he was a uh, what we would say, a rancher, right? He, he took care of animals. Cain was a farmer. He took care of all of the things that they grew from the ground. And from what we see here, God blessed both of them in their abilities to do the tasks that they were given and that, that, that were their passions. So it says in verse 3, In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. And Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering he had no regard. So what that means is that God accepted Abel's offering of the sacrifice of animals, and God establishes that back with his mother and father, earlier chapter, where they sinned against God, and it says God fashioned clothing out of them from, from animal skins. So what that tells us is that God sacrificed an animal to provide covering for them, and that there was always needed to be a blood sacrifice to atone, to, to, to pay for the sin of mankind. And if we look, as we look in the Old Testament, we see that God establishes how we sacrificed, how his people, the Israelites, excuse me, sacrificed animals for certain things. Uh, there, were, there were lambs that were sacrificed, there were sheep that were sacrificed, there were goats that were sacrificed. There were oxen and bulls that were sacrificed. There were uh, different types of birds that were sacrificed. All for um, the atonement of sin. Now you also see in the later uh, books of Moses, even later uh, in, in Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy, they add other offerings, but those offerings are not for sin. They're for other things. And their grain offerings and offerings of oil and all this other stuff. Um, a lot of that was, was a sacrifice or a tithe to the temple, to the priests, for a lot of different reasons. And we won't get into all of that today. But for this point and this time, God required a blood sacrifice. And it was a sacrifice of a lamb. And what do we call Jesus? What's one of the terms we use? We call him the Lamb of God. In fact, in the New Testament, he's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And so there was always going to be a blood sacrifice. Before Jesus, it was animals. After Jesus, it's just Jesus. We don't sacrifice any animals or anything as a blood offering because God's Son, Jesus, took care of all of that for us when he came and died on the cross and shed his blood. He took care of sin once and for all. We just have to believe and accept that and become followers of Christ, which I hope that you are. So it's a lot of information to digest, and maybe because it's on video, you can kind of rewind it and go through it again. I don't know. But at this particular mom moment in time, God had regard. He accepted Abel's sacrifice. He rejected Cain's sacrifice. So Cain, is still in verse 5, so Cain was very angry and his face fell. Now when it talks about your face falling, your countenance changes. 
And that was uh, for kings of old. If you walked in and your countenance was not the right way, they could actually literally execute you. Um, if you read the story of Esther, that's very part of that whole story. So um, I know I'm throwing a lot of information. Let's just stick to this story, okay? Uh, that's on me. But his face fell. I mean, his countenance changed. He was angry. And the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your face fallen? If you do well, you will, not, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is contrary to you, but you must rule over it. And so right here, God's saying, Cain, if you do the things I ask you to do and you follow after me, you will be rewarded. I will bless you. I will continue to bless you and raise you up. But if you let sin creep in, well, what, what sin is he talking about? Well, let's see. If we go back up to verse 6 or to verse 5, it says, what was his first thing? He was angry. He was angry. And it says his countenance fell. His face fell. And God says, what are you upset about? Right? Will you not be accepted if you do the right things? And, um, you know, it says, won't you be lifted up? And, won't, of course, won't your face and your countenance change if you're doing the right things? So it seems to me here that Cain was having an issue with not only anger, but he was also having an issue with pride because he came to God with the work of his hands and said, God, here's my awesomeness. Accept my greatness as worship. Accept the awesome things that I've done. And Abel came to God and said, I had nothing to do with the birth of this lamb. You created life. And so this life has been sacrificed to honor you and to, to make a substitution for the wrong things I've done. So the stuff that Cain did was done by his hand. And God said, and God has always told us, we can never meet God's demand for perfection. Nothing, we, can, we cannot do anything to be in God's good graces, right? The only way God accepts us is through the blood of Jesus Christ. And when we say, Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I have given my life to you. Jesus, I accept you as my savior, my substitute for the sin that I am in my life. God sees us through Jesus and says, I accept that person because they believe in my son who he is well pleased with, right? That's what, that's what we've learned about when we were talking about the life of Jesus way back in the spring and the summer. And we were talking about how that Jesus is found favor in God's sight, in God's eyes for the things he did while he was on earth. He takes our place. So our trust and our hope and our faith is in Jesus and his shed blood. And sometimes we might have trouble believing that and we might have a struggle with it. It doesn't mean it's not true and that we, our job is to seek out uh, God to encourage us and grow us closer to him. He loves us, gang. He loves us so much. He loves you as an individual human being. And so this is the beginning of the story of how he is going to be our rescue plan how he's going to rescue us from sin. And the first and foremost thing was this shedding of blood had to take place. So somehow Cain doesn't understand that and Cain gets angry because God did not accept his first fruits, his best offering. You know, he didn't bring rotted fruit to God. He brought the best of what he had. He wanted to show God how hard he had worked. And God says, listen, God tells us in the New Testament, in, in the New Testament, hey, you need to labor for me and you need to do things for me, but not to earn your salvation so that others may come to know Jesus as their savior and accept his free gift. And so the things we do for God aren't necessary, they're not to be put in his good favor because we were already in his good favor because we accepted Jesus as our savior, right? So we're doing good works to point other people to Christ. Cain did not understand that that's what God was trying to teach him, that the blood sacrifice is the only thing that covers the sin of man. And so he was angry. 
And it's and God comes to him and says, listen, if you do well, you will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door ready to take advantage of you. And so that sin was already creeping in. He was angry. He was angry at God for not accepting him. But then what happens? It says in verse 8, Cain spoke to his brother and asked him to go out into a field. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother, Abel, and he killed him. So the problem we have here is that Cain is mad at God for rejecting his sacrifice. But he can't kill God. So then his anger then now becomes refocused on the wrong person. You see, Abel is innocent of any wrongdoing in this whole situation. He did what God required and God honored that. Now Cain is mad at his brother because God honored him. Kids, how many times do we get upset with other people because God is honoring them or they get some achievement that we didn't get? They get told yes and we get told no. It happens all the time, especially with siblings. They see their parents appearing to give great favor to their brother or their sister and they get the leftovers, right? And they're upset and they're angry and they don't understand why their brother gets to do X, Y, and Z and I'm being told no. You know, so often that happens with older siblings, right? Your older siblings get to do things that you don't get to do. Well, why is that? Because you're not ready to do those things. Your parents are not ready to give you that responsibility of you know, hanging out with your friends and going over and spending the night with a buddy or, or a girlfriend. Um, you know, one of, one of the girls have girlfriends they want to spend time with. Well, when you're three, you're not ready to go do that, right? When you're eight or nine or 10, then maybe you're ready to go spend the night with a friend. But your older sister or brother who's eight or nine or 10 is getting to go spend the night with a friend and you don't get to go. So now you're mad at them because, and they didn't do anything wrong, right? They just did what their parents allowed them to do. And you're like, why can't I go? So they go over and spend the, the night with their friend. And what do you do? Maybe you go into your brother or sister's room and you find their favorite toy or favorite whatever, and you break it because you're mad because you didn't get to do what you wanted to do, right? This is the same thing, except way, way worse, right? Cain rises up and he kills his brother because he's mad at God because God didn't accept his sacrifice. So now anger has driven him to jealousy and jealousy drove him to murder. Like he was like, I'll just remove the problem. I'll kill that, that do-gooder and then now God only has me. He'll have to take my sacrifice. It's not how the story ends though. Let's read further. And when they, Cain rose up and, and killed his brother Abel. Then in, in verse 9 it says, Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Now here's the crazy thing. He's talking to God, right? And God knows everything. Remember back when Adam and Eve uh, ate of the fruit of the tree of good of, and not, uh, the tree of knowledge of good and evil? And God comes walking in the garden. He's like, Adam, where are you? He goes, where we were hiding. Why are you hiding? Well, we, we, we were naked. Who told you you were naked? Well, they're no, they know they're naked now because they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And they understood that they, didn't, they were not clothed and they were ashamed of their nakedness. Before, they didn't know any different and they were perfectly fine in the way that they were. God knew what was happening, but God is calling them into accountability because God knows everything. God knows Cain killed Abel. He knows it. But now he's making Cain accountable for his actions. So he says, I don't know, am I my brother's keeper? Yes. Yes, you are your brother's keeper and you're your sister's keeper. You're to take care of each other. You're to love each other. You're to build one another up. You're to protect one another not harm one another. This is what God is trying to get to, to, Kate, to Cain. And then it says in verse 10, and the Lord said, what have you done? 
The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. And Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. And so now he's, he's saying, my, my punishment or my guilt is greater than I can bear. It's too great for me. This guilt that is now on me. So he has regret very quickly after he killed. You know, that's what happens. We get angry at stuff and we're like, Rawr! and this rage takes over in our lives and we go and we break something, right? Like I, the analogy I used, the, the story I used about your older sibling getting to do something and you don't get to do it and you get angry and then you go and you break their stuff. And, you know, at the moment you're just all, you know, you just want that thing because you're so angry and you're so full of, of hate and, and anger and you're upset. And then it's over, and what happens? You begin to feel bad. You begin to feel guilty. And so Cain is feeling guilty now, and he says, I can't take it. And he says, Behold, you have driven me today away from the ground, and from your face I shall be hidden. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. Now, what we have to understand here is that when God tells Adam and Eve to, re, to fill the earth, um, they begin to have children. And because they lived it so long, they were able to have many children. And so Cain and Abel, while well, they are spoken of specifically in here, we find out that Adam and Eve had many children. They had sons and daughters for a very long time. And so... He's concerned now that some of his other siblings, or maybe he, even his dad, will want to pursue vengeance on him and kill him because of what he's done to Cain. And God is merciful and says to, to Cain, listen to this. Cain says, I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer in verse 14 on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. And then the Lord says to him, not so. If anyone kills Cain, Vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And so God says, no, Cain, I'm not going to let anybody kill you. And maybe that's what Cain wanted because he wouldn't live with the guilt of killing his brother. But God said, no, you are going to live and you're going to live for a very long time. And he says, and the Lord put a mark on Cain, lest any who found him should attack him. And so he did something to Cain that gave a warning to all of everyone else. Do not touch Cain. He needs to live the rest of his life wandering around and he can establish some things because we're going to read about what he does, but he will never, ever stop wandering. And he was always going to carry the guilt of his brother's death. So then Cain went away in verse 16. Cain went away from the presence of the Lord and he settled in the land of Nod, which actually means the land of wandering. East of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she had and bore a son named Enoch. And he built a city. When, when Cain built the city, he called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. And to Enoch was born Irad, and Irad fathered Mahujiel, and Mahujiel fathered Methuselah, and Methuselah fathered Lamech. And Lamech had two wives. The name of one was Ada, and the name of the other was Zillah. Abel bore Ju Jabel, and he was the father of those who dwell in tents and have livestock. So Jabel became the father of farmers, of ranchers, right, that dwelt in tents and had livestock. And the, I think the reason why they said tents was because in those days you didn't have fenced off fields where your animals could go and eat crops. You had to travel to where the food for your animals were. So you sort of lived a nomadic life where you would be in an area where your animals would graze and when they would graze through that area they would need to go to another place and so they'd pack up their stuff and they'd move their flocks and their livestock to different places and to places where there was water and plenty of food for them to eat okay and then it says his brother's name was jubal 
And he was the father of all those who play the lyre and the pipe. And so he became a musician and he taught others to play. And that whole idea of music was to show worship to God. And I'll make that point here in a moment. And then it says, Zilla also bore Tubal Cain, and he was the forger of all instruments of bronze and iron. He became a machinist. He became a guy who made tools to give to the others so they could use them. And he made them out of bronze and iron. What we don't see here anywhere is that these people were ignorant people, that, that they were slow to their brain, right? They're, they weren't cavemen-like when we hear about cavemen. No, these folks were descendants of Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve are made in the image of God. We're made in the image of God. God didn't make cavemen. God made highly skilled and intelligent, smart people. My belief is that these folks were way far more intelligent than some people give them credit for and probably more intelligent than we are today and could do things technologically that we have no answer for. Now that's just me speaking, but I want you to understand they were very intelligent, smart, capable, skilled, talented people. The sister of Tubal Cain was Nama. So Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice, you wives of Lamech. Listen to what I say. I've killed a man for wounding me, a young man for striking me. He was in a fight. Don't know the details, he's just telling them this. He said, if, Cain, if Cain's revenge is sevenfold, then Lamech's is seventyfold. And so he knew about, um, he knew about his grandfather, his great-grandfather. Remember, they lived for many hundreds of years, so he would have a relationship with Cain. Um, verse 25 says, And Adam knew uh, Eve, and she bore a son and called his name Seth. For she said, God has appointed for me another offspring instead of Abel, for Cain killed him. So they knew what Cain had done. And so God has set Seth in the place of Abel. So to Seth also a son was born and he called his name Enosh. And at that time, people began to call upon the name of the Lord. And what that's saying is they began to worship him. So remember Jubal from a few verses ago said he was the father of all those who play the lyre and the pipe. God led him to that and gave him that skill set so that he could make musical instruments so that people could express worship the right way and they began to call on the name of the Lord and they began to worship him because that's what God wants from us. You see, the takeaways from all of this lesson this morning, guys and girls, is that Cain did everything the wrong way. And we see that and it was tragic in what he did. It, the loss was great. And so, we want to do things the right way. We want to worship God correctly. We don't, bring the, we don't bring our hard work and say, God, accept me because of all the good I'm doing. We come humbly before God and say, I am a, I am a sinner. I am, I am not worthy, but the blood of Jesus Christ washes away my sin, and I understand and accept that. Now let me show you how I worship. By the songs that I sing praising your name, by the, the time I spend in the word of God, by the time I spend admiring your creation, by the time I spend in sharing my faith and my passion for Jesus with those around me. Kids, that's what our job is. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, your job is to share the love of Christ by how we do, how we live life. When we serve others who are less fortunate than us, you're showing the love of Christ. When we pray for a friend who might be struggling with math or English or science or social studies or some other school subject and we pray for them and maybe we're good at that subject and we, we offer help to our friend, we're showing the love of Jesus Christ. We're worshiping him and we're doing it the right way. We're saying because of Christ living in my life and, and, and knowing that apart from him I would be separated from God forever, I am showing my love for him by loving you by putting, pouring love into you, by pouring love into my parents, by showing people that God loves me 
and he's given the greatest sacrifice for me. Abel did that through his sacrifice of the animals. Cain did not. I want you to be like Abel, not like Cain. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for this awesome time we've got to spend together for a little bit this morning or, th or this afternoon or this evening or whenever it is these guys and girls are watching. God, put your Holy Spirit into their lives. Help them to grow, to be the Christians that is your desire. And help them to love you more and more each day and to do things the right way. Not to be jealous or angry when, when you bless another person in a special way, but to celebrate and rejoice with them. God, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, girls and guys, have a great week. I care about you. I'm praying for you. I hope to see some of you soon. I hope to see all of you soon. Who's ever watching? Again, if you need someone to pray for you and you want to reach out to me, man, just drop a comment in, down below and I will do that for you. I will check it and I will, I will pray for you. Or you can reach out to me directly with your parents' permission. And I'll pray with you. I'll pray with you over the phone. I'll do it. I'll pray with you, uh, you know, through email or however you want to do it. Um, but I care about you, and I want you to know that we here at Murray's Alliance Church, we love you. All right? Have a great day, and we will see you on the next video. Bye, guys and girls. See you soon.